let's think about a hypothetical human population where we're going to track the population over a series of 20-year time intervals. So there will be a group of people that are between 0 and 20 years old, a group from 20 to 40, a group from 40 to 60, a group from 60 to 80, and while there will certainly be people older than 80, we're not going to track people once they get past 80 years old. Since we're tracking for 20 years, it means that everyone in this group to start with who is still living will be in this group after the 20-year time period. And similarly, everybody in this group who's still living will be in this group, and so forth. Let's make up some hypothetical data to work with. Let's pretend that there are, let's say, 100 people in this group to start with. And so let's pretend that when we track them over a 20-year period, that 98 of these 100 people survive. So that means at the end of 20 years, there will be 98 of those people who are now in this group. And let's suppose that among those 100 people that we started out with, let's suppose there have been 24 births of new babies. So that would give us 24 new people in this group. So what I'm showing here with the red numbers is what we have after 20 years based on the 100 that we started out with that were in the 0 20 range. Those 100 starters are responsible for there being 98 survivors in this group after 20 years plus 24 new births that happened during that time. We now need to translate this discussion into some information for our population dynamics matrix. We start out with 100 people and we know that after the first 20 year period, 98% of them survive and are then in group 2. Or to put it another way, for each one person we start with in group 1, we have 98 one hundredths of a person in group 2 after our first 20 year period. But in addition to that, we also have 24 new births. So that's 24 new people in group 1 produced by those 100 that were already there. So for that reason, we also need to enter a 0.24 right here. As a result of each person that was in group 1 to start with, at the end of 20 years we have 24 one hundredths of a person in group 1, that's the new births, plus the 0.98 one hundredths, which is survivors, but nothing that happens to that group of people has any effect on groups 3 or 4. Now let's make up some data for the group 2 folks. Let's say that for each 100 people we start out with in group 2, um, let's say that 92% of them survive. So that means after 20 years, those 100 people will be 92 people in group 3. And also, these folks in group 2 are in heavy childbearing years. So let's suppose that those 100 people that started out in group 2 during the next 20 year period produce 77 new offspring. So that would be 77 folks that appear, babies that appear in group 1 as a result of that. To rephrase that, for each 100 people that start in group 2, at the end of 20 years, 92 of them survive and are in group 3, and those 100 people produce 77 new births, which of course occur in group 1. So in our matrix, that says each person in group 2 produces 92 one hundredths of a person in group 3. Starting in, starting in group 2, 
We produce 92 one hundredths of a person in group 3, but we also produce 77 one hundredths of a person in group 1. Nobody remains in group 2, and of course we don't get anybody in group 4. Now let's think about what happens to the folks in group 3. Let's imagine there being a 100 people in group 3 to start with. What happens to them? Well, let's suppose that 57 of them survive the 20-year period, so that means of the 100 that are in the 40 to 60 age group to start with, the survivors will be in the 60 to 80 group after 20 years. We assume there are 57 of them. And since people in their low 40s are still of childbearing age, at the start of that period there will be a few additional births. So let's say perhaps there were four births that take place from this group, and that would be four additional folks that pop up back in the first group. So that gives us additional data for the population dynamics matrix. Uh, each one person that starts out in group 3 produces 57 one hundredth of a person in group 4. So we put a 0.57 here starting in group 3 and also produces four new births which take place in group one so we have a point oh four back over here nobody pre being produced in groups two or three and then to finish up in the 60 to 80 age group uh, anybody that was in that to start with is past age 80 by the end of the 20-year period and doesn't produce anybody new, at, new that appears in the picture. So this bottom row will be all zeros. A person in group 4 doesn't contribute anybody 20 years in the future that fits in this picture. So we now have our population dynamics matrix. Let's call it T. And let's suppose we have some initial population distribution that shows us, that tells us what the breakdown of the population is to start with. For simplicity, we'll suppose that we start out with a population made up of 1,000 people in the 0 to 20 group, 1,000 in the 20 to 40 group, same in 60 to 40 to 60 and 60 to 80. So if we want to know what the population distribution looks like after one 20-year period has passed, what do we do? We just multiply P times T. What would you do if you wanted to know what the population distribution would be after 200 years? 200 years would be 10 20-year periods. So you would do P times T raised to the 10th power. 